Hello and welcome to the Austin Center for Radiation Oncology. I'm Dr. Richard Garz, I'm a radiation oncologist, and I've been here for about seven years. During that period of time, I've really seen this clinic focus on its strength, which is the treatment of prostate cancer. We're considered a high volume prostate cancer treatment facility. I see about 600 patients per year, and I counsel them through what their options are for treatment. Not everybody picks radiation, which is fine, but our goal is to really help you through the process of which treatment's the best option for you. And we want to assure you that if radiation's your best treatment, you're in the perfect place for that. And over that period of time, I've also seen that people have some of the same universal questions. And one is, wow, I've never been through this before. I'm not sure what to expect. So our goal is to really help explain the process of setting up the radiation therapy, getting a daily radiation treatment, we're gonna talk about short-term side effects, long-term side effects, as well as cost, because that's very important. But also, people wanna know, am I in the right place for this? Do they have the right equipment? Is the team a good team to work with? What's it like on a daily basis coming in here? Is it sad? Is it a happy place? Is this some place that I'm gonna feel comfortable? We're gonna to attempt to answer your questions today. You'll get a more tailored review of the process when they actually come in for the consultation. One of the first steps in understanding what your treatment options are is to understand where you're coming from. Where are you on the spectrum of the disease? Am I localized prostate cancer? Am I advanced prostate cancer? Or am I metastasized prostate cancer? We're gonna help you with that. But probably the most important thing is to understand what stage you start with and which risk group you fall into. There are standard risk groups that are assigned by the national organizations, such as low-risk prostate cancer, all the way to very high-risk prostate cancer, and each one is treated differently. Sometimes radiation therapy is the key player, sometimes it's surgery. Sometimes people have already had their prostate cancer treated with surgery and it returns, so they need radiation therapy afterwards. Our goal is to really help you find out where you started on the spectrum of the disease. Sometimes radiation therapy is the best option for you, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you need a combination of therapies that include surgery and radiation and possibly hormonal therapy. The goal is to find out what's best for you. Here at the Austin Center for Radiation Oncology, we specialize in treating prostate cancer. Not just a little prostate cancer, a lot of prostate cancer. We're considered a high volume treatment center. What that means to you is that everybody from the front desk to the physician and to the therapist that actually give you the treatment have the expertise of treating prostate cancer. From 6 a.m. in the morning till about 5 p.m., we treat prostate cancer. 99% of what we do is prostate cancer, so we get pretty good at it. From the therapists that bring you into the room to line you up and identify your prostates to the therapist that actually treats you, make sure you're in the perfect spot and actually initiate the radiation plan are all trained specifically to treat prostate cancer, they can find a prostate on our CT images extremely well. You don't wanna to go to a place that does prostate cancer every once in a while. You want somebody who does this all the time. People often focus on the technology involved in treating prostate cancer, typically with radiation therapy machines, and they're looking for the latest model. Here at the Austin Center for Radiation Oncology, we've got two models to pick from, and one is best suited for you. One of the advantages of the Austin Center for Radiation Oncology is we're deeply tied to the urologist, so we have access to the electronic medical record as well as your history over a period of time. This really helps enhance the experience that you have when we don't have to repeat exams that your urologist has also done or have to repeat any tests that they've done in the past. During the consultation, we're gonna walk you through the process of what's involved before you actually get on the treatment table, what it's like to be on the treatment table, and what happens after you're done with your treatment. Almost every situation where radiation is used, we have to customize the radiation for your body, specifically for you, and we take into consideration those differences. It starts off with a CT simulation. Depending on the type of cancer you have, we may do some special procedures before that simulation process to increase our accuracy. During the radiation therapy, we really wanna focus on the cancer itself and keep as much of the normal tissue out as possible. One of the techniques that we talk about is keeping your bladder full, which actually distends your bladder so it pushes the normal structures out of the way, such as the intestines and you want to keep your rectum empty so that your prostate is not anterior displaced or pushed out of the way. Our treatment machines are very accurate. It's down to millimeters, but it all depends if the patient's in the correct position. So our therapists are trained to have you lined up perfectly, first using skin marks, and then essentially using image guidance to fine tune the process for you. Our machines are very sophisticated and they can actually track the prostate. 
So before each treatment, we use a low dose CAT scan to help find your prostate. And there are a few things that we can add to your prostate to make sure that we can track it even more precisely. So one of the techniques we use is placement of fiducial markers into the prostate. These are small pellets that are made out of gold, so they don't interfere with medications, they don't interfere with MRIs, and they don't interfere with airport scanners. They're very simple procedures and adds that extra level of accuracy that we really take advantage of. One of the other goals of radiation therapy is to really decrease the amount of radiation to the normal structures. And the ones that are very close are the bladder and the rectum. And there's a novel approach to actually protect the rectum by pushing it away from the radiation field. And that's a gel called Spacer OAR. It's a new gel that's actually inserted through the perineum that goes directly between the prostate and the rectum, and it creates a buffer zone. In the long run, the goal of this is to decrease the side effects such as radiation scar tissue. One of the most common questions is how many treatments do I have to do? The goal of radiation is really to deliver a high dose of radiation to a very specific area. And depending on where you are in the spectrum of the disease, we may have to increase our radiation field to also cover areas that could potentially hide the prostate cancer. Depending on how much the normal tissue we have in place helps us determine the number of treatments. For example, if you have low-risk prostate cancer, you're going to need fewer treatments than somebody who has high-risk prostate cancer. And the number of treatments can really vary. They can be as low as 5 treatments or as long as 45 treatments. It really depends on where you are in the spectrum of disease and how big the radiation field has to be. To get a radiation treatment is actually pretty simple. Once your schedule and plan is designed, most people get here 10 minutes before their appointment time. They're going to prepare for the treatment by emptying their rectum and start drinking 16 ounces of water, typically an hour before the radiation therapy appointment. They'll arrive at the radiation center 10 minutes ahead of time to change into a scrubs or change their clothes. They'll spend about 15 minutes on the treatment machine, and the radiation is effectively on for about three or four minutes total. It's a relatively simple process. When you're on the table, there's no nausea, there's no vomiting, there's no fever, there's no chills, there's no burning sensation. If you drive yourself here, you can almost always drive yourself back. Now, one day out of the week is doctor day. That means you get your treatment and you come to the doctor's office and we talk about your side effects. Typically, the first week will say, this is easy. I don't feel anything. I'm not crazy about the traffic around here, but the actual treatment's pretty easy. About the second to third week is when the inflammation starts to build up. And some people describe going to the bathroom more frequently during the daytime and at nighttime, both for bowel movements and for urination. Somewhere around the fourth to fifth week, some people may have some referred pain. That is, a pain at the tip of the penis, where we're not giving any radiation therapy, but it's actually a referred pain from the inflammation on the inside. Some people say my hemorrhoids are itching, and sometimes they need a hemorrhoid cream. We're not giving radiation directly to those areas, but it's often referred from the radiation on the inside. As soon as you're off the treatment table, you're no longer radioactive. You go home, and you're not going to expose your loved ones or any of your family members to radiation therapy, and you're not going to set off any type of gag or counter. As you go through the process, we evaluate your side effects a week by week to see if your side effects are appropriate for as much radiation as you had. At the completion of therapy, we're gonna set up some appointments for you. We're gonna make sure that you have a return visit to see Dr. Garza and an appointment with your urologist. And we're gonna set a schedule where we check your response to therapy by checking your PSA. Over a period of time, we expect your PSA to have different types of responses depending on where you are on the spectrum. Patients are always curious, what else can I do besides the radiation therapy to enhance my response and to lower the side effects? During the course of treatment, we're going to talk to you about diet. In reality, there is no special diet for prostate cancer. It's the same heart-healthy diet you're supposed to be on already. But there are certain foods that can aggravate your symptoms. And if appropriate, we'll give you a list of foods that can help reduce those side effects in the long run. If you have too much gas production, we have a list of foods that can actually help decrease the amount of gas that you have. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're on radiation therapy is they take it too easy and they don't exercise. Well, let's say after two months of no exercise, you're going to be tired, not from the radiation therapy, but basically because you're deconditioned. So exercise is always definitely important. We recommend a combination of cardiovascular exercise as well as weight resistance. And we can give you tips on places that can help you with that if you need a prescription for a physical therapist or just motivation for self-help using a web program or a personal trainer.
One of the ways for us to help you best maximize your response to radiation therapy is to bring a list of your medications, not just prescription medications, but also supplements. And we're gonna review those supplements for you. Radiation therapy works through an oxidative process. So it's important that we look at your medications to make sure you're not taking any extra antioxidants that can theoretically work against the radiation therapy. Don't get me wrong, antioxidants are great for prevention of prostate cancer, but during treatment, they can really deter the benefits that radiation provides. For certain types of cancer, typically a bit in the middle group or a more aggressive group, we have to use hormones as an adjunct to the radiation therapy. Those are things that help the radiation work better. One of the most common is hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy comes in different forms. You may hear us refer to it as Lupron therapy, but the main goal of hormonal therapy is to take away the food that the prostate cancer is feeding off of, and that's typically testosterone. So we'll give you a medication that may lower your testosterone levels down to very low levels so that it starves the prostate cancer. Hormonal therapy definitely helps radiation work better. It helps to shrink your prostate so you start to pee better and it kills more cancer cells in places that radiation can't reach. The bad part is that you can go through menopause for men, and that means that you get symptoms like hot flashes. You lose your sex drive along with it, but most importantly, if you don't exercise, your muscles will get smaller, and if you don't exercise, it's very easy to put weight on. So it's definitely important to keep those things in mind. Now, hormonal therapy definitely helps radiation therapy, and some people have to be on it for a brief period of time. Some people have to be on a long period of time, it really depends on factors that we see on your pathology report, and we're gonna go over that with you. One of the fortunate things about prostate cancer is that it's not lung cancer, it's not pancreatic cancer. Those are all diseases that can really shorten your life measured in months. With prostate cancer, you're gonna live for years. So it's important to pick a treatment that has a side effect profile that you're willing to live with. So we're gonna go through a detailed chart with you, and we're gonna compare prostatectomy, which is surgery, against two different forms of radiation therapy, and we're gonna talk about very different endpoints. Most specifically, we're talking about sexual function, the effect that treatment has on erectile function. We're gonna talk about urinary control. We're gonna talk about effects it has on the rectum in terms of bowel movements. And ultimately, we're gonna talk about your vitality score. Each one affects each of those endpoints very differently. We're gonna talk about which one is the one that's best suited for you. In general, radiation therapy is very well tolerated, but you can have radiation or cancer therapy induced fatigue. Typically that fatigue will get better as you go through the course of radiation therapy and as your body adjusts. But there are some people who have fatigue for different reasons besides the radiation therapy, and those are emotional issues. So we're gonna help you decide how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with difficulty sleeping, and how to make this fit into your new lifestyle. During the course of radiation, a lot of your questions are gonna be answered, a lot of your anxieties are gonna to start to be addressed, and you'll start to get into a routine that works for you. It's also important to understand the diagnosis of prostate cancer doesn't just affect you, it can also affect your family. So we have resources that we can reach out to to help you address any anxiety issues, any issues that your family may be experiencing along with you. Earlier, I expressed the importance of the team that's treating you and their expertise. But at Urology Austin, we have part of our members of the team that are outside of the institution. And they include people that can help with addressing anxieties that you may be having, anxieties that your family may be having. We have resources available to help you have a better exercise program specifically tailored for you, such as if you have a bad back or bad knees. A lot of people say, I don't exercise. Well, you should still exercise. You just have to modify that exercise so we have access to a physical therapist. If you need additional resources in terms of dietary issues, we have nutritionists that we can reach out to. So the expertise of our team isn't just limited to the Austin Center for Radiation Oncology, it really extends out into the community. Ultimately, when you've decided where you're gonna get treated, if you're gonna be treated with radiation therapy, rest assured that the Austin Center for Radiation Oncology has the expertise available. And we have a passion for delivering state-of-the-art care. In 2010, when we opened the center, we were one of the first places to really specialize in a type of cancer, not just in radiation therapy, and we were one of the first sites to really bring image guidance to full use. We've done that again with our Halcyon Treat Machine, bringing the first one to Central Texas. We've covered a lot of information today. It's a lot to take in at one time. We've created a website full of useful resources to help you through the process of understanding what's involved in radiation therapy. 
That website is austinradiation.com. I'm Dr. Richard Garza, a radiation oncologist at the Austin Center for Radiation Oncology. I look forward to seeing you in a consultation.